Talking about a, a, a child with an undeveloped brain. They don't know what the fuck they do. Yeah, yeah you talking about an undeveloped brain kid. Everything yeah. that a kid does is, is it's all impulsive, right? Based on what they feel or what their friends are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to belong. Uh, it wasn't a matter. It, it, when, when you're going through what you're going through as a kid, you don't know I'm doing this because dad's not there. Right. You just know you feel something. Yeah. You just know you were born into a condition. You was born into a situation where your dad's not around. Yeah. You don't know that's not normal. So, so I met a kid, go, go ahead. I met a kid once before here recently and he's had both his mom and his dad. And so I asked him, hey, what's it like to have both your mom and your dad? Yeah. He couldn't, he couldn't understand what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. He don't know what it's like not to not have. Yeah, correct. So to grow up and, 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 and every child you see don't have a dad, that becomes normal. Yeah, it's that's the, true. It's the house with the dad that everybody says, hey, man, they got a dad over there. Wow. So you don't know until you grow up. Yeah, it is. And, 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 and you can look at your life uh, and assess your life where you can start connecting the dots. But when you're a kid, it's your environment, it's the conditions, it's the, your, your nurture, the, 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 the foundation of your home life uh, dictates uh, what you're gonna go outside and become. That's it's right, interesting. that's right. It's interesting in that your mother uh, brought you out of poverty or, you know, and, and bought a home, she got a job, and you and your brother ended up with your own rooms and everything. And yet that wasn't enough for you because I read well, that. See, but that's, that's what I was talking about right there. That's what I was talking about because that is a real thing that happens all the time. It's time so many people that I know that grew up in households that I grew up in a nice household. I didn't grow up. I wasn't, I wasn't thugging. I wasn't none of that, but I had, I had homeboys that grew up in an even nicer household. And they were cutting the food, and I could never understand it. I'm talking about your house. You got like three story houses and stuff like that, and you and you. And wh why are you doing drugs? Like why why are you fighting? Why are you getting locked up? And I could never grasp the concept of that. Yeah. You decided to run away from home, and and go on a crime spree. Would led you to what you say, Jess, a spree at a 14 spree. and go to prison and all that. So it's interesting how well, that's still. I, I, I ne I've never been to prison. I mean, jail. Let me just say this. To uh, jail, I, never, right? I, I went, went to prison. I went to a boy's home. Oh, okay. Uh, let me just say this. Okay. Culture, culture, right? Culture is way more influential, way more powerful Wait, than home life. Said? Juvenile jail is kid is a jail for kids. Mm -hmm. It's like an adult jail, but there are no adult inmates there. It's just kid inmates. It's just children. But he said he never went to jail. He never went to prison. Well, we know prison is a term for an adult. Well, he said he went. He never went to prison. Prison is totally different. Well, right. Prison is the yeah. big boy. Yeah, but he went to boys' home. There, I guess they could. It could be where you're from. It could be because he Texas. They may call. The, the the um the Kia jail like how we have Rice Street and stuff like that are no Rice Street ain't kids it's Rice Street kids no but there's a juvenile detention center it's like a kids jail the one in Clayton County in Georgia I know that's there's right one out here too I don't know where I think I was but someone may have pointed out to me I don't know but I know it's one here as well I mean yeah yeah mm -hmm. upbringing let me give you an example there was a time when black people hung from trees. And there was white people standing in the crowd saying, I don't agree with that. But they wasn't gonna speak out because culturally it was okay to hang niggas. Correct. There was a time when white people said it was okay to enslave black people. But there was a part of the people that says, no, nah, that's not right. Yeah. But culture, but culture says we're gonna do it. So. You that's, put your head down based off what you was raised. That, but that's true. Overall, the culture influences it all, right? That's why culture is so strong and so in, impactful. So here I am. I'm born into a culture that goes against what my mother teaches us. Yeah. I'm born where my culture, I got my mom saying, you need to go to work. 
I got an uncle who I see on a regular basis by way of being family members. He a pimp. I got a grandfather who sell drugs. I got another uncle who sell drugs. When I look across the street, I got another neighbor. He's getting out of jail for robbery of uh, my cousin. So when I come inside and I cut my television on, I'm born in 1977. Think about the culture then. Pimps was glorified during the black exploitation film era. Yeah. Superfly, the yeah. Mac. Yeah. So I'm, I'm growing up watching all of this on the culture. I got a mother going to work. My culture don't show me mama going to work, but I see mama going to work. That's amazing though. That was a culture. That was that's definitely a time. And he's definitely right. There were different eras. You just put your, your head down, even though you didn't agree with it, but that's what they did. But you saw the Jeffersons. They were wealthy, affluent blacks that lived in a nice high rise condo. Um, hotel that had they were entrepreneurs. He owned a yes, nice. Yes, but that was on TV. That wasn't around his surroundings. I know, but he just said movies. He just named Superfly. That's something he watched on TV. But, but that was the predominant. I know, but but what TV you watching? Because if you saw Superfly on TV, even though some of the characters he's saying it was depicted there in his community, he saw his mama getting up going to work she wasn't no prostitute or nothing mm -hmm. like that she was a hard-working god-fearing woman yeah but then what about the other ones that you saw as well because you weren't just looking at superfly and whatever the other ones it was an attraction because you got to think his family around do to certain things and you seeing that that's an attraction true and that's not like how you live it Mm -hmm. Think about girls that come from good home, but they are like thugs. It's the totally opposite of what they live exactly. in. It's, it's an opposite exciting. Track. Yeah. Right. All the things that my culture presents to me is negative. Yeah. And I have these same negative images, not just in my family, they in the community, they at my friend's house, they at outside the school. So biblically, my mother says that the Bible says, a son can do nothing without his father, that he can only do what he see his father does. So if there's no father around, who do you mimic, mama? So I know a lot of young boys who didn't have no uncles, didn't have no brothers, mm -hmm. didn't have no male cousins. So they was the little boy sitting down peeing outside when we were standing up peeing. Mm -hmm. So I seen a whole lot of little boys who was mimicking mama. So yeah. they sat down and pee until they went to school. Yeah. Mm. So I had uncles in Mimic, right? So Confucius said, he who controls images controls mind. Mm. My little mind was being controlled based on me being young with a young, impressionable mind. So it's not that I went against my mother. I have a culture. You got NWA. Fuck the police. So all of this is being pushed upon us as children, culturally. Yeah, right. yeah. Boys in the hood, yep. menace to society. They take away the, the Cosby show. They take away a different world. So culturally, man, all of all the negative images is being propagated right. to yeah. us. So I literally grew up believing that men, for one, don't work because I've never seen a man get up and go to work. I grew up believing that men went to prison and went to jail. So I aspired to be a man. Mm. I, That's it. There you go. That's it. Yeah, I mean, but we know that. <laughs> What's your question? I'm just, I'm just, I'm like, okay, he hit you right on what question? I said. Christian. What's Christian. your question? No Christian. All right, let's continue. What? How do you become a man? Amazing. You gotta go to jail, nigga. <laughs> so I want to be a man. That's I amazing. heard you saying, mama, you a woman, but I want to be a man. Yeah. So you I know want, I set out to be a man. I, I wanted to ask, um, so is it true that at age 14 you kill someone? I ain't killed nobody, but yeah, we killed somebody. Uh, in the state of Texas, if one person pulled the trigger, all four of y'all did it. Yeah. Uh, morally, morally and ethically, if you participate in something and it's wrong, so, you've done wrong. So what was so it like at the time knowing that 
all four of you, whomever, had shot and killed someone. What was that? When you th- at the time when you thought about it after it was done, what was it like for you to reflect on that as a 14 year old? Oh, it was funny. It was funny. Yeah, it, yeah, it was funny. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, when if I got a toothache and I got a real bad toothache, I don't care about your headache. So our kid, I'm in pain as a kid. I can't tell you why I'm in pain, but man, I'm 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 in pain, and so my my pain have evolved into to anger. So I got displaced anger. Uh, we didn't have no no remorse for what we did when we done it. We don't understand what we did. Yeah. A 14 year old don't understand. They they know they done something wrong. They know they killed somebody, but to understand the the ramifications and, and the reasoning. That's key. He just said a key. He said a key. So that's the same concept, right? Like, so shout out to um, PNB Rock. You know, rest in peace. Same concept as the young man who killed him. Obviously, no concept. Because if you had a concept, you will realize that so many people have done this kind of thing before you, and their life it never ends well. They are either in prison, or they get shot down, or they have gotten they get killed. And they realize, and they have not concept of the choice they're making. They're only in the pain and the hunger of what they're doing at the moment. Nothing else matters of what's going to come from that. I mean, I agree to a degree. However, if you have the ability to think logically and aware of you know your surroundings or you you have a you you're you have all your cognitive function and you are functioning on a normative spectrum then <clears throat> we understand that even now research says that the brain you know they want to push the age of adulthood to 25 versus 21 because even a 21 year old and even they're saying 25 the brain still isn't fully developed they want to call it an adolescent but you're still you're in your early you're a young adult yeah but I feel no matter how the circumstance has been horrible, and I have worked with kids who've had some horrible circumstances. So many times I have cried because a kid was experiencing something and then we knew they were gonna go home and the situation wasn't gonna be any different. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, the situation is somewhat different but they're still going through the pain. Right. So they're acting out. Yeah. But the kid has to understand this. If you wanna be free and not in jail, then you are gonna have to learn how to express your pain in a positive way. Forgive because you're not in control of the situation. Yeah. But when you are in control of the situation, when you become of age to move out of the home and get a job and go take care of yourself, you do want to be a productive citizen, a productive free citizen in society. Yeah. So no, I, we understand the pain because this is the population that I work with. Yeah. So yeah, we understand your pain. However, your pain still does not give you the authority to take another person's life because you're in pain. And and that's where I don't agree. Yeah, you may not understand why he said that, you know, I kind of disagree to, um, I kind of don't agree all the way when it comes to not understanding. Because if you have all the cognitive ability, you may not like it, you may not enjoy it, you don't know why the dad or whatever the situation is, but you understand right and wrong, you understand their laws in the land that you live in. You know, you understand these basic things then I don't agree. I, I don't. I can't necessarily say I agree with that. Okay. And like with the P and D situation, the guy knew exactly what he was doing. I didn't say he didn't know what he's doing. I said they don't understand why you're doing it. The and anger you and, and the anger and the the hunger for the want superseded the yeah, consequences. I don't think that's the same situation. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that's the same situation. All right. There's, there's no way a kid can do that. So, so when you were hurt someone, did it ease your pain? No. Uh, hurt people hurt people, but hurting people don't take away your hurt. You just hurt other people. 
uh, no, nah, it, it don't. You, you're, as a kid, you can't process this. You're, 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 you're trying to ask logical questions for a kid to give answers to an adult when the brain process, all the medical, all the data, all the science and research that we have in this country says the human brain does not develop to at or around age 25. That's why the insurance rates don't go down to after 25. So they got this information. So when you got a kid that then grew up in a single parent home, just take me for instance, I've never been abused, hadn't been molested, never seen my mama get beat up, didn't grow up in a violent neighborhood. <laughs> my mother wasn't on drugs. So I just grew up without a father. Yeah. Right? But I had a loving mother who instilled right and wrong, morals and values, but she had to go to work. And she provided a great home life for us, right? But she had to go to work. So when I was getting out I of don't school, mind. my mother was around. going to work. What does that leave me? No parental supervision. Yo. We got all the food in the house. So my mother's saying, leave your homework out. When I come home, I'm checking your homework. I'm calling at such and such time. So we knew what time my mother breaks were. I got an older brother who a couple years older than me. They're going to get in trouble. Boys are going to be boys. Kids are going to be kids. Teenagers are going to be teenagers. The element of all of this is not the single mother. It's the village. It don't take a mother and a father to raise a child. It takes a village to raise a child. So when we you keep were, saying, what about the mother and the father? What about the village? How long were you in juvenile? I spent right at seven years from the age 14 to 21. Best time of my life. And, wow. and when you were there today, how long were you supposed? The sentence was for how long? I got 12 years. Oh, okay. I received a, I re, I received a 12 year sentence. I was facing 40 years. And when you say it was the best time? Wow. Right here. Let me, let me hear what he said. That's why I said the best time in your life. Let me hear that because I would never tell anybody juvenile was the best time in your life. Well, you got to. I know why he's saying that. Well, okay. Because yeah, you, you about don't to have say, a dad. Just, because. But you, sit, you have to ask why. What's the question before you make the assumption? Okay, let me hear what he got to say. Time of your life. What do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. uh, best time of my life. It was like growing up in, in, inside of a perfect two parent home. Uh, during the time of my during the time of my 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 incarceration, I became one of the first children uh, in Tarrant County in Fort Worth, Texas, to be tried and adjudicated for the crime of murder. Mm. Most people don't know that when a child get in trouble, they're not in criminal court. I don't care if they kill ten people. A child commits murder, and juvenile court is family court. So there's a difference between family court and criminal court. I went into family court with a murder case. You can't convict a child. Children are adjudicated unless they stand trial to be tried as an adult during a certification hearing where they transfer into the adult system. So I remained in the juvenile system, right? When I went there, we had a governor by the name of Ann Richards. Ann Richards was a recovering, recovering alcoholic drug addict. Oh man. <laughs> Had a lot of focus on uh, rehabilitation and re-socialization. So I went into a, 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 a culture that was built around this. These three psychiatrists and psychologists had built this, this program called Positive Peer Culture. And so they created this culture of a positive peer culture. And it was formed around re-socializing children and repairing children. And they had psychotherapy drama where we reenacted our crime. That juvenile facility gave me all the skills and the tools necessary for me to come out here and be successful. Oh, good, man. I didn't, so uh, Ann Richard, was she, <laughs> she had a drug problem too or just an alcohol yeah, problem? She, she was a recovering Alcohol. alcohol. <laughs> I just caught that. I just caught that. <laughs> I just caught that. Alcohol. Okay, sorry. 
she was a recovering alcoholic and I, I, I believe prescription pills. So oh, don't quote me on that, but I know for a fact she was a recovering alcoholic. I used to, um, I used to work. Her daughter, Cecilia, was my boss at one time when I worked for the union. So I know who you're talking about, but I didn't know that about Ann. Um, yeah, so so she had a lot of she had a lot of heart, man, for for building programs, man. So uh, the program that I was in had a capital offender program uh, that helped us get in touch with with, with victim empathy. Uh, we were considered the 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 worst. We, we were the first generation of children in the state of Texas who began committing these murders. I'm the super predator generation, right? I'm the, we, we're the first generation of kids outside of California, Chicago, New York, and Philadelphia, where children were committing murder. So this was in the late 80s, early 90s, where they said, hey, we got a wave of black children that's gonna be born and they're gonna be super predators. They're gonna be bigger, they're gonna be faster, they're gonna be stronger, they're gonna be heartless, and they're gonna be incorrigible. That's what your democratic leadership said. They're 